my pleasure to welcome the speaker today, Cheryl Cohen. Um, Cheryl started the Cheryl Cohen Mosaics Art Center in 2013. Armed with a master's degree in education, she teaches 2,000 adults and children. Uh, during the pandemic, she sends kits to all her students in different parts in the continental US and she can teach them online. Cheryl's mixed media uh, mosaic style combines everything that she loves, including glass, tile, mirror, stone, shells, jewelry, and beads, as well as shards of pottery and china. Cheryl is a self-taught artist. She lives in Hopkinton. So Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm looking forward to your program. Welcome. I call it unwrapping the gift of your creativity because uh, this is not me, obviously this is one of my students, but um, uh, one of the things that I see all the time working in visual arts is people walk into my studio and they're very hesitant and they just don't know. You know, they always say I'm not creative. And so it's become one of my things to talk about creativity and how to boost people's creativity. So what are we gonna do today? Oh, meanwhile, I do have pictures of my art on each slide. I'm not actually talking about my art, but you can see it's very 3D, mixed media oriented. Um, but at the very end of this talk, I have all these same images listed at the bottom. So if we have time, I'm gonna go through and I'll, I'll answer questions and that kind of thing. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna play games. We're gonna talk about creativity tips. We're gonna discuss current research and hopefully give you a few thoughts on how to add creativity into your life or more creativity. I think all, everybody is creative, maybe a little more. So I'm just kind of wondering, do you consider yourself creative? And that includes cooking, art, software, development, writing, gardening, whatever. So if you could, I think most of the people are not on mute. So you're welcome to just say out loud, yes or no. Yes. 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 Well, I'm impressed. I'm impressed already. Um, do you think creativity can be learned? Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, gosh, we're yes. all so smart here. Okay. So basically what happens in my studio is people come in and I work with kids and adults. And when they come in, the kids are bubbling with ideas. They're so confident. They totally have a vision. They don't want my advice. And, um, and even my granddaughter says, whenever I talk about being an artist, she's five. And she says, I'm an artist too. Like, hello, you know. And, um, but adults, on the other hand, unlike you people who think you're creative, but you know, again, mosaics is different and um, you know, people feel differently coming in to learn something they don't know anything about. But adults are tentative. I, I hear a lot of, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not creative. And I just, you know, started wondering, where did it go? Where did that creativity, where did that oomph for whatever happens go? I had one student come in and um, she, she said to me, I'm an Excel spreadsheet person. This is not my thing, but I wanna make this. So I was like, we can make that. So the first day she came in, she was all hesitant and, and all, and, and long story short, second, third class, she is just throwing supplies together and she has just became this creative bundle and so excited about the whole process. And, um, and a lot is, you know, uh, I'm gonna talk more about kind of why that is, but a lot has to do with just having a safe place where you can just be with other creative people. And like this group here, um, you know, you, when you brainstorm and come up with ideas, you know, getting around cre other creative minds makes you more creative. Um, so you can see my picture, right? 
Everybody can see my picture? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ask you to do to start with a little, very quick activity where you're going to take your paper and a pencil and draw. And this is uh, painful to ask, but draw. you have one minute to draw a picture of me. So as you're doing it, what's one word that you can say that how you feel about doing this? Frustrated. Yeah. Awkward. Awkward, frustrated. What else? Inept. Inept. <laughs> Inept. Unchallenged. Untalented. All right, stop. Hold up your masterpiece. No way. <laughs> Oh, I'm gorgeous. I am stunning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your brilliance. Now, what's interesting is in this group, nobody said, I'm sorry. A lot of times you hear, I'm sorry, but we did hear frustrated and all that kind of stuff. And of course, it's an impossible activity to do anything in one minute. But, um, but that's what you get from adults. You know, it's a completely normal adult reaction to say, oh God, so bad. I'm not going to show this, you know, and, and it's the typical adult reaction. So back to kids and adults, when kids are asked to do this kind of activity, they don't see an outcome as right or wrong. They're process oriented. They're open to whatever the artwork looks like. Adults, on the other hand, we judge ourselves. We're worried we'll be judged. Uh, and the big, one thing that drives me the most nutty about people's thoughts on their own creativity is a lot of people feel like if you cannot draw a representational picture, you're not a good artist. Like a picture, if, if I say draw a picture of a horse, if it, people feel like if they were a good artist, they could draw something that looked like a horse. Whereas there's so many kinds of art that have nothing to do with drawing. I mean, I'm not a fabulous, you know, drawer. And, um, but anyway, but people kind of see art as being very black and white. So how can we enhance our childhood creativity? We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing, which is George Bernard Shaw, my, one of my favorite little sayings. So how do we inject more play into our lives? Well, um, Sir Ken Robinson did a TED Talk in 2007, and it's still the most viewed TED Talk. And that is four, what, 14 years ago, a long time ago. But his shtick is do schools kill creativity? Now, for all those teachers out there, I love you beyond belief. I used to be an occupational therapist in the school system. I work with teachers. I And there's nothing better than teachers and, and teachers do an unbelievable job. But his premise is more about this, you know, when you're in school, there's a right or wrong answers often, much less so nowadays, but, but you know, there are right and more wrong answers and that school should be more about experimenting. And, and again, it is much more than it was even in 2007 but it should be about experience, ex, um, experimenting. It also should be about mistakes and like encouraging mistakes, making mistakes. Because so only through mistakes can you build creativity. So he thinks mistakes should be honored and, uh, and, and actually encouraged. So we're gonna just do one other thing with the other piece of paper. And I'm gonna give you one minute to do anything you want with that piece of paper and make something creative or not. Um, but the trick is you um, cannot judge yourself. You have to be open to play, be silly about it, not focus on the outcome. And at the end, we're all gonna hold it up whatever you made and say, isn't this great? All right. So I'm gonna count down and you're gonna hold it up and say, isn't this great? With a big smile. One, two, three. Isn't, isn't this great? Isn't this great? great. <laughs> it's so, look at them. They're so beautiful. I need a hat. I'm really impressed with it. 
<laughs> really, really impressed with my hat. Um, but that's so that was your mini experience with being five. So what happens to our five-year-old? Um, and, and what does our inner voice say? So we all, all of us have an inner self-critic with negative self-talk. We know about this. It deflates our inner child from creating. Um, and then we, of course, have outer critics. I mean, did you have a sibling who said, your duck doesn't look like a duck? Or did you have a first grade teacher who said, you know, work harder on that picture of your family? And, um, and all of a sudden it's like, it, it, you take it in and you're like, and then your outer critic, critic becomes your inner critic. And I hear this all the time in the studio, people saying, I, you know, I'm not the artist in my family. I'm not the blah, 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 blah. And my younger sister, who's the athlete in the family, I was the artist, um, now comes to my studio and makes stuff. But she really felt funny about that because I was the artist, you know, it seemed like not quite right. So I'm gonna jump into some tips and research about how to kind of boost your creativity or enhance it a little bit. And basically creativity is making a connection where no connection, connection exists now. So it's making something that's never been there before. And all those paper brilliance things you did never were there before. So that was uh, genius. So, um, so basically, one, one thing, one aspect of research says uh, to have a creativity corner in your house, a safe space and a constant reminder that that's your place. So let's say if you're a writer, it could be a little special chair, it could be a blanket, it could be a special pillow that you sit, you know, a special book kind of on a table that every time you see it, you say, huh, I should write a poem now. I should write in my journal now. Um, as you know, a lot of offices are doing this where they have like in Google, they have ping pong tables and firemen poles and they have, they make their office spaces interesting for when people were in offices to enhance their creativity. You know, that's always a really, really nice little tip. The next one, there's something called a three hour rule where believe it or not, it's very hard to get in a super great role in the zone with less than three hours or, or knowing you have less than three hours. Um, and there's been a lot of research on this. It's also about what's your best time of day. I mean, I am not a morning person. I will never be a morning person. The first three hours of the, the day are not gonna work for me. But you know, I'm more of kind of an afternoon midday kind of person. So when I plan my three hours, uh, that's when I would plan it. Um, and then on days where you're tired or less productive, you know, I clean the studio, I organize, I do other things because nobody's going to be creative every day. But it's really great if you really need something to get in the zone to have three hours. One thing I thought was interesting when I was reading was um, MLK, when he was giving his famous, I have a dream speech, he, um, that was not in the original draft, the I have a dream. He just thought of it. And it was, cause he was in the zone, he was rocking it. You know, he's just so, so in the flow, amazing things happen. And I'm guessing he had three hours to work on whatever <laughs> before that, I don't know. Um, and I love this saying, I hate writing, but I love having written. Because creativity is hard, it's, and it's messy. And it's not always easy. It's not often pretty easy. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you just get on a roll and life is great. But, um, but it's, it's not easy and it's not always pretty. The other thing is, it's, it's downright ugly plenty of times. You know, it's hard to tolerate the ugly parts of creativity. The first draft, the second draft, the third draft. And it's frustrating and ugh, I don't even know if I like it anymore kind of thing. This is my table, not, at, not anywhere near its messiness. This is probably fairly neat for me. 
but kind of trying to put together a project or beginning to. There's something called the bathtub, the bed, and the bus. And it's called the inter inspiration paradox. And what it is, is you know how you get your best ideas when you're in the bathtub, when you're waking up, when you're taking a walk, but when you're super focused on finding a solution, sometimes it is just not there. But if you get up and take a walk and go other places, personally, my mind's in the shower and when I wake up in the morning, that's when I get my ideas. But in some, sometimes in the middle of the night, the theory behind this is that sometimes when you're thinking really hard and you're kind of hyper-focused on a, a solution, the solution is not in that part of brain, your brain that you're focusing on at the time. So if you go somewhere, take a walk and see a green leaf and say, oh, you know, a green leaf, green, green energy, maybe all this, maybe all that. And it triggers other parts of your brain and synapses to make that connection. So the bottom line is it's best to really take time to relax because that's more likely to be when you're going to get your best ideas. And then there's brainstorming. And in brainstorming, quantity equals quality. Um, the more ideas you have, if you have 10 ideas of, from your brainstorming list and you have 30 ideas, at the bottom of the list of the 30, you start melding all of the thoughts together and those tend to be your best ideas. So your best ideas are probably on the list under, you know, between 20 and 30, especially when you're doing it with groups. So it's best to really make long lists. It's also good to walk and exercise before, before brainstorming. Um, so they did a study where they put people on a treadmill uh, well, they gave people things to brainstorm about. And they, in one group, they said, okay, you can, um, you have to go on a treadmill for 20 minutes and then brainstorm this list. And the other group just sat and relaxed and then brainstormed for the 20 minutes. And sure enough, the people who were on the treadmill had double the brainstorming ideas. Also, don't wait, don't wait for creativity to strike. You know, a lot of writers say this. A lot of writers say, okay, I write between nine and one every day. And sometimes there's something and sometimes there isn't. But to make it more of a regular activity, because if now when creativity strikes, <coughs> run and do it, that's for sure. But if you wait for creativity to strike, it may or may not happen. And this is my favorite. Moderate procrastination is good. Isn't that great news? So basically, if you solve a problem quickly, you, you didn't have time to marinate in your brain for long enough to make enough synapses to come up with maybe your best idea. So if you moderate, uh, procrastinate too much, you know, stress gets in and that's not good. But if you moderately procrastinate, you, your, uh, your subconscious is actually thinking about it and processing it. And you're more likely to come up with more creative ideas. And then inspiration. Um, it's really, this is my studio and the floor is so clean. It's like, wow. Being around a lot of other people, being around other creative minds, it feeds itself. So the answer to my original question is, Creativity may, may or may not be learned, but it's definitely contagious. And so it's really important when it comes to inspiration to feed your creativity with Zoom travel, nature, whatever makes you happy, reading, um, to constantly be feeding, feeding the beast, certainly. Believe it or not, they say speaking ideas instead of writing them down, you're less likely to edit. So they actually the research says to talk your ideas into your phone or record or whatever, they're a little more likely to be more creative than if you write them down. So I love this. Some say, uh, some say great, I guess it should be the great, greatest creatives fail the most. We are all afraid to fail. But a creative is more afraid of not trying. Failure is part of the process. And that's certainly true in art and probably every kind of creativity is failure is, 
is is huge. I mean, it's constantly like, oh God, that's not working. That is working. And leaving things till the next day so that you can pick them up and say, ah. And then I have a friend of mine, I call my muse, and she walks, she comes into the studio and says, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. You know, <laughs> And having people in your life who can really, really be honest is really helpful. So in summary, be five years old again, uh, find a safe space, walk and relax, find inspiration and group involvement. So I want to know what stimulate, I want you to write down what stimulates your creativity. And I want you to write down one thing you can do in the next 48 hours to boost your creativity. That's another thing that, you know, studies show if you do want to change or alter, or you may not want to alter anything in your life and no problem with that. But if you do, it's best to do something from any kind of talk or gathering or, or learning experience in, the, in 48 hours. Because otherwise, we all kind of have our patterns. So one thing I did is I did um, make, you know, like I said, I have my, my pieces below. And you can, um, and I can talk a little bit about the pieces that I showed you during the presentation. Or people could ask questions or both. So I love the ones that you have. It looks like a cactus plant. Oh, okay. So why don't I go through some of these? Tell, tell us how you make those. Okay. Well, so long story short, this is a mixed media piece. This has a lot of shell and rock and, and I love 3D. This, the mountains are slate. This is my, this is what you're talking about, Barbara, Yeah, right? those are my favorites. This is my succulent flower series. Okay, so I am a complete obsessive lunatic lately. I came up with this about six months ago, and it's all I can think about. I dream about it, and this is all I do. So basically, the succulents are made out of pottery, china, uh, no watering required, which thrills a lot of people. So these are actually uh, pottery. And I just started a class last week on it. I'm giving another one uh, next month. And, um, and it is just so much fun. This is driftwood. I have different techniques to make it look like it has a lot of depth. Um, and it's pretty wonderful. So like you probably have seen pottery that looks like this, like this. This is that kind of coach plates. Um, and so it, it is a complete and utter blast to make these. And this is a di little different technique of making flatter flowers. Um, but it's my latest obsession. So this is one of my students just holding a, snow, a picture of her for her son. He was snowboarding, a snowboarder. Um, this is one of a student piece and it's, um, it's on a bent surface. We also learn how to make surfaces that aren't. Uh, this one is a, a class I teach where we make um, polymer clay tiles. So you learn to make mm. your own tiles. Very fun class. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then, you know, here's the word create, enjoy, and it's just, you really can throw in words. This is an abstract piece. I just got into a show recently. Um, uh, the people are doing virtual gallery shows now. This is another class I teach starting at the end of the month, making garden globes, super fun. And all these classes are good for beginners on up. So if you've never, this is my one, but this is, these are student work, these two. Mm. So you can make them as complicated as you want. Here's another 3D piece. This is a piece I made for the library, uh, the Holliston Library and gave to them. Sail away with a good book. I really enjoyed your program, Cheryl. I found it to be very interesting. And um, thank you. Yeah. And your pieces, they inspired, they look beautiful. Like Barbara, I really like that cac cactus. Oh, uh, the yeah. succulent oh, garden cactus. is my favorite. Yeah. You know, yeah. I tell you, I have gotten such a response for, out of this um, that. Uh, 
that I'm, I'm really excited. Um, and it's so, so, so very doable. I have one woman who joined my class that I started last week to make these never, never touched mosaic cutters, never didn't know anything about mosaics whatsoever. And she is so excited. She Every single day, she's sending me pictures. Look what I made today. Look at the one I made today. Look at this. What do you think of it? She's so excited because it's, and that's what I find really exciting is you don't have to be an artist to do mosaics. You really don't. And, and a lot of creativity is like that, but I think mosaics in a way lends itself more to that just because the glass and the materials are so beautiful that anything you make is pretty. Yes, thank you so much, Cheryl. It was really fun. This is a oh, fun thank you.